you are watching Adjuster TV. Hey, IAs, and welcome to the Auto IA Show by IA Path. At IA Path, we help you break through the experience requirements in the adjusting industry. You know how most new people are required to have three to five years worth of experience and nobody can meet those experience requirements? We help you get that experience requirement waived with our 90-day online virtual mentorship programs. If you're interested, head over to iPath.com. Today on the show, we have a legend of sorts. Pete from IADA is coming to represent a company that has represented IAs in the industry for 80 years. Yes, there's been IAs for that long, and IADA has been there basically since the beginning of IAs, and they're here to help you elevate your game and become more and to be able to do better and earn more income in your industry of choice. But before we get to that, I got to let you know that you should head over to Adjuster TV's YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. Once there, don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time we have a new video. Now, if you're ready, let's learn what an organization that's been around for 80 years can do to help you in your career. But first, do you need errors and emissions, general liability, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claims Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, they wanna give you peace of mind while you work with the insured. To apply, head over to cplic.net today. All right, IAs, I am joined now by Pete Sheehan. Now, Pete, if I botched your name, you're not the first guest to name <laughs> to be annihilated on any of my shows, and I apologize, but Pete is with IADA, and Pete and I have been connecting over the past few months and trying to figure out where this industry needs to go. We as a little bit younger chickens in the appraisal industry are looking like, what's the next stage of our of our industry? So, Pete... I appreciate you coming on today to talk with us, and I appreciate you coming on today to kind of introduce us to what you and IADA do for our business. Absolutely. Glad to be here. And I agree with you. A lot of people are looking for the direction of the industry because we're all in a big transitionary period right now. So. Uh, March kind of blew up. Any change uh, yeah. you thought might be happening, I was like, <laughs> whoa, like, okay, now what? And I think it's important for people to realize that this isn't the first time the industry has massively shifted. So why don't you explain to us what IADA does and kind of what you do at IADA? Sure. So I'm the media manager for IADA as of, uh, I want to say, February of this year. I haven't been with them too long, but we're, uh, we're accomplishing a lot. We have a lot of projects going on. So IADA is the Independent Auto Damage Appraisers Association. We're a national nonprofit trade association for independent auto damage appraisers, as you can probably follow. Uh, so IADA, a lot of people don't know this, but they're actually almost a century old. They were founded in 1947, and uh, as they originally called the Independent Appraisal Plan, and basically this was, you know, as you can imagine, not too long after automobiles became a thing at all. <laughs> yeah. So they started having the problem of repair costs going out of control, insurance companies. I mean, the, the concept of car insurance wasn't even that old at that point. So. Um, IADA was founded right around this time, and they were, we were kind of integral to the origin of the independent appraiser or the damage appraiser profession um, because the organization was founded for the same reasons that we have appraisers now, just to control repair costs, make sure the insurance company, the repair facility, and well, the well, car the, owner are all happy with the everything. The insurance company says we're a cost. You mean we help control costs? What? Yes, right. That's a, that's a novel <laughs> idea. I never really. No, I love it. I love it. It's so. It, it's true though, and I think people you don't who are listening and watching don't miss that. Like a lot of times we view ourselves as an expense, but really we're there to pr insulate the insurance company, like IADA did to help establish. Like, whoa, we need to keep repair costs fair, accurate. So, 1947. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the IA plan was born. 
right? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't, it, it didn't become known as IADA until like the sixties, I believe. But so, uh, but the, the purpose of the organization has been the same the whole time. So it's been, it, it's crazy to think about. It's been almost a hundred years since the organization started and Basically, the mission statement of the organization is just, is just to promote high standards of ethics, professionalism, and accuracy, and just general excellence in the appraisal profession, and to represent the interests of the independent appraisers like as a community, as a whole. Even though a lot of us might probably think of each other as competitors, we are, we are a community, and IAD uh, functions almost like a union to represent the interests of all appraisers and basically our mission and the reason uh, what, I'm, what I'm here to talk about today is how we want to raise the standards of excellence and you know, education, accuracy and everything across the profession, not just even for our own members. Um, now, well, so, now, before we even get into what you guys are looking to do, I think it's important for us as IAs, me, you and those listening and watching to, to kind of sit and go, well, why, why would we want to raise this standard when everybody else is lowering the standard in some people's mm -hmm. eyes with virtual photos and, you know, virtual claim handling, what would raising the standard of IAs do for us? Well, and yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something that everyone, especially IAD has been thinking about a lot lately, because this has been a transition that's been happening rapidly over the last couple of decades or so. And, uh, the way the way we figure it, there's always going to need to be appraisers, even though even though they have they're getting computerized systems that can write estimates nowadays. They're having people send in photos from the field. They have the direct repair programs that allow the insurance company to just deal directly with the shop. But there's always going to be those cracks that need to be filled in by independent appraisers, and you need skilled, experienced, educated professionals who understand from start to finish the claims process, from start to finish the repair process, who know what's going into a repair, what needs to be done to fix a car properly, and to do it within the best possible budget, do it in an economical way to protect the interests of the insurance company, the repair facility, and the vehicle owner. I mean, that's, that's basically the crossroads we sit at as a profession, is as a middleman to make sure every, basically make sure nobody's getting screwed. Yeah, totally. And um, I remember one repair, uh, which totally validates this point that I got to be a part of it and, you know, reinspect the shop on. And they were asking, you know, it's a front end hit, things obliterated all the way through the radiator support and just going through the supplement. I mean, I was just doing it like it was routine. I wasn't like out mm -hmm. to get the shop. I'm just, okay, yep, there's that bracket. Oh, radiator support. Yep, I see that. Let's take a picture of that going through. And I get to this camera. I think it was like the sensing camera for the cruise control mm -hmm. you know i can't even remember what exact terminology it has but the cruise control camera it was like a 1200 dollars part i believe with labor you're getting to like 15 1600 bucks I was oh, like, okay yeah. where's that and the guy looks down at it and he goes i just think we put that on there just in case it was damaged it's, yeah it's that's pretty damaged. common he didn't even grab it or anything <laughs> he, he was like uh no don't worry about that so right there my measly amount they paid an IA firm, probably less than 150 bucks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm getting 60 bucks or 70 bucks of that. And we just saved the insurance company $1,500 on that one repair. So yeah. it's what and you're talking about is protecting. From the insurance company's perspective, I mean, a lot of times the people making the decisions to move to remote estimating or move to DRPs or what have you, um, a lot of times they're looking at, they're looking at it from the top down. These are high level executives making these decisions and they're going, all right, uh, you know, I'm CEO of State Farm, or whatever. We're moving to full virtual estimating, photo estimating. We don't need to be spending all this money hiring appraisers. But then you give us, give us a, a circumstance like the one you just described. You need somebody down there on the field looking at it, looking over every item who knows what they're doing and has the proficiency and expertise to make those decisions and realize that, for instance, in this case, um, it seems to me the shop was probably just, they were probably just, oh yeah, throw that on there. Maybe they'll miss it. We'll make, you know, an extra 1500 bucks in our pocket. <laughs> just if, you know, if nobody, because they're from the shop's perspective and you know, not, not all shops work like this. There are plenty oh, no. of reputable shops out there, but a lot of them, you know, your job as the shop estimator is to make as much money as possible for the shop. So a lot of them are doing stuff like that. Oh yeah. Just throw it in there. Maybe they'll miss it. We'll get a few extra bucks here, a few extra bucks there. 
you know, we said we were going to use OEM clip, but we use aftermarket clips. So, but to, to answer your original question, um, to raise the standards of IAs kind of just reinforces the reason that our profession needs to exist and they can't just have these computerized systems. Um, because, uh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, if we, to ra if we raise the standards of education and skill and expertise, it basically boils down to having people uh, re recognizing our value as a profession and the value we bring as professionals to our clients. The more expertise you have, the more education you have, the more skill you have as an appraiser allows you to bring that value directly to your clients. Now, a lot of the industry seems like it's going the other direction because costs have been, costs of appraisals have been going down. They've been trying to use pretty much anything other than an independent appraiser wherever they can. <laughs> Even if it saves them 20 bucks, they think it'll be better than potentially catching something like that. It's really- Yeah, exactly. And they're, ba and, you know, they're banking on statistics when they implement these kind of programs. Because they, you know, they say, well, our, our AI that writes estimates, our photo estimating system is, a, is only 10% less accurate, but every single appraisal it saves us 20 bucks. So maybe that'll add up. Um, if you ask me in the long run, it's probably going to end up costing a lot more money and they're only implementing these systems in like the last few years, the last decade or so, but there are going to be lawsuits. There are going to be just slippage across the board. They're going to see severity grow, uh, go up. Um, but in general, if you, if you ask me, there's always going to need to be appraisers. And if it, if, if appraisal becomes a more specialty, like something that only, if they continue down this road, say they say 100% of fender benders or just anything, any low severity claim, if those are done 100% by photo estimating, DRP, AI, or what have you, um, the only places they're going to need appraisers after that point, I mean, hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, the only place they're going to need appraisers after that is for very involved claims. So the, uh, the skill requirement to be an appraiser is only going to go up. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. As you're going to need to be become more commoditized than the people who actually know what they're doing. <laughs> it all of yeah. a sudden become the experts of the field, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, whoa, you actually know what you're doing. Get over here. I'll pay you extra to go manage, be the middleman in between this whole yeah. repair process. And we get, yeah, totally. The, uh, and in general, I mean, even, even before all the remote estimating, photo estimating stuff, the complexity of vehicle repairs and the average severity of a claim has been going up for years and years. I mean, we're all, we're all, I'm assuming everybody watching this is an appraiser. You know what it's like, go look at a car. There are 700 little pieces of electronics built into the bumper cover. And you need somebody on the field who knows what they're doing, what they're looking at. And I can't tell you how many times I've appraised a car and pulled some little piece of plastic from down inside the bumper cover and gone, oh, I wonder what that does. And end up going, uh, looking in the computer system and go, oh, this costs $600. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> and exactly. I looked at that. So um, what is IADA doing now that you guys are looking at it and your mission's the same? We need to raise the level of what, you know, being an IA, an auto damage appraiser is, uh, what are you guys doing now to kind of help that in this new era? So uh, that's, this has always been our mission. So, but it's only uh, recently that we have this new program we're doing that I'm here to talk about. So um, like I was saying, IADA is almost a hundred years old. So in the modern day, our membership is full of these elite, highly skilled, highly connected industry veterans. I think our average member has, has at least 20 or 30 years of experience at this point. That's um, intense. Yeah. So there, we're just full of these guys. I mean, these are guys who, who have been ICAR instructors, who have sat on the board of numerous auto excellence organizations. Um, and uh, so, so, but it was only recently. So we started what, what I'm calling the Education and Outreach Initiative. That's only really started in the last few years. Basically, we've always had really high standards for our membership, but we've kind of realized that uh, we, we have all of these like high level elite older guys, but there's this whole other generation of newer appraisers, like people coming out of IA path or uh, pe people who might not have even heard of IADA. And we kind of had to stop and look at ourselves and go, wait, our mission isn't to promote the success of our members 
our, our mission and our organization's mission statement is to promote the success and excellence of the entire auto appraisal profession. Like we want to raise everyone up because it benefits the whole industry. Like, like I was saying, um, so the, so the, the first thing, basically the tip of the iceberg on this ed education initiative is we just came out with the IADA appraiser certification program. And this is, so you're probably asking what that is because there's a lot of certification stuff out there. You got ICAR Platinum, ASC, Vail, uh, any number of estimating. There's like a Boca one too that I keep getting asked about. Have you heard, have you seen that one? I can't remember what it's yeah, called. Yeah, I don't think so. But yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different certifications and even me who I feel like I'm kind of involved in the industry. I like to know what's going on. I yeah. don't know the difference. Like what is that certification versus this one? I know what my certification is, but I don't know what that guy's is and he probably doesn't know what mine is. So it's like, yeah, you guys are looking to kind of bring it. it. So what's the difference between your guys' and maybe something else that's out there? So the, the main difference is, so there's a lot of estimating certifications out there. There aren't a lot of appraisal certifications. So, as uh, as far as I'm aware, the IADA's new excuse me IADA's new program is the only appraiser certification program. And this isn't to say our, our our certification is not to say you're skilled enough to work as an appraiser. Our ours is kind of setting the higher end, like setting the bar at the high end. Um, and uh, our, our program essentially. It like to, to qualify for the IADA appraiser certification program, you're going to need to have all the education, skill, and experience already. Like you'll probably have ICAR Platinum, have a Vail certification, have a bunch of ICAR hours, um, just to meet the minimum requirements. Because uh, essentially, what we're trying to do is set like a high bar for people to aspire to. And uh, so, like if you if you were to have our certification, you'd be saying to the industry, I have the skill and experience and expertise to consider myself an elite member of this profession. I'm skilled and, you know, I, I can't, I'm not just somebody who goes and snaps pictures of a car. I am skilled beyond the normal uh, standards of the industry. And I want everyone to know that I can take care of business. I can fulfill this claim from start to finish and nothing will get past me. So, we're hoping to put this as the new standard for kind of the big kind of like leagues a veteran the standard, almost like there's yeah, those exactly. of us who are like, we're beginning beginner level. We just got started. And yeah, my father-in-law mentored me and oh, I want to go take pictures, but it wasn't for some years that I actually started to be competent really and understand mm -hmm. and wrap your head around it. So you're kind of saying like, Hey, you're not in the beginning stages. You're not even in the novice stages. You're now in, like you said, an expert level stage. So can you kind of go over, give us some, the, some of the requirements for that? I think you said you had three levels. So uh, well, what that first level is. So those who are listening, if they've got two years experience or five years or seven years, they can start to think like, what else do I need to get to get this seal that says I'm an expert in this industry? So what are your guys' kind of starting requirements? Yeah, one second, let me just pull it up here. All right, so there are... Uh, so there are three levels of the program, and when you when you apply to join the program, you're going to have to submit your qualifications, and you're going to have to submit a few uh, uh, a few like sample estimates or appraisals for the review by the board. So we have a we have a review board for the program full of industry professionals who have collectively have over a hundred years of experience. Um, so the three the three standards uh, you're judged by on the program are experience, you have a minimum amount of field experience as an appraiser specifically, uh, education, uh, which we rank in number of I hours of ICAR classes or equivalent training. You don't strictly have to have done ICAR, but that is very much the industry standard. So, um, But you could easily qualify for any level without having done ICAR itself. So the, uh, so the three levels are experience, education, and skill. And then there are three levels of certifications. Level one is the professional certification or the pro, as I like to call it. Level two is expert and level three is the master appraiser certification. So level one starts with five years of field appraisal experience. Uh, you'd have to submit a resume with references. You would need to have at least 10 hours of ICAR classes or equivalent 
uh, you'd have to submit a, a list of your completed cor uh, courses with a certificate. Um, you can also qualify, instead of 10 hours of ICAR classes, you can also qualify with an apprenticeship or endorsement by an IADA certified appraiser. And then uh, in addition to those qualifications, you'll have to have your submitted estimates reviewed by the review board. And then uh, the requirements just go up from there. For level two, you have to have 10 years of experience, uh, 20 total hours of training courses, and level three is 15 years. And then you'll want to have at least two of the following, ICAR Platinum, ASC, uh, Estimator Certification, Vail National Appraiser Certification, or any other outside certification. So basically, you'll have to have at least two existing certifications for that, just to show, because the level three, the master certification says, you're Yoda. I've seen it all. I've done it all. There's <laughs> nothing I can't handle. You are Yoda of the appraiser industry at that point. Exactly. And you wield a very powerful sword. So that's awesome. I really like what you guys are doing um, and giving people something to aspire to. Yeah, because, exactly. Because, you know, for a lot of people, I think we get in this industry and um, I actually got an upcoming podcast about this, but about what, how, why veterans struggle. Why, why do the veterans struggle? Like the veterans mm -hmm. should be having a time of their life right now. They should be doing better than any new person, but why they struggle. And I think part of it, at least for me as a veteran, is if you've hit the goal you initially set, mm -hmm. you become stagnant and you're not aspiring to yeah. more. You're not looking forward to what's next. You're just going, you're maintaining. And when you start treading water, that's when you start sinking. <laughs> that's no, yeah, exactly. exhausted. So I, I think, love that uh, we're having a bar to look forward to and go, hey, I can get that. Yeah, exactly. Now, I think I think you hit the nail on the head because it's uh, when when you stagnate and you stop learning and you stop adapting, uh, that's when you're going to start like, hey, you're not you're not going to be happy with what you're doing, and then you you really like you can't succeed. You have to. It's like a it's like a shark. You have to keep swimming to survive. You know, and uh, part of it, and this program is meant to appeal to veterans of the industry as well, even people who already have many qualifications because uh, your, your quali all the qualifications I talked about, they do have to be recent because when you talk about continuing education for your profession, a lot of people will, will be like, well, I got ICAR Platinum, you know, 15, 20 years ago. That training is not necessarily relevant to today. You can't really consider it continuing education unless it's within it's the last anyway. five to ten years at the very least. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason those credentials expire. Yeah, the, uh, things change. So um, now I'm going to ask the elephant in the room um, because obviously that's what the person listening and watching is going to say is like, mm -hmm. what? You guys are wanting us to pay you a bunch of money to tell us we're good. So why don't you tell people, yeah, you got to meet these experience requirements. But is it going to cost them anything? Like, what is how do, what's that process look like? Okay, they're so, they're up to the game. But what do they need to do? Yeah, so it, actually, the cost is very minimal to apply, but um, you're you're definitely not guaranteed to uh, to pass unless you have the right qualifications because it is it is meant to have very high standards. It's not meant to be something that any anyone can uh, receive. It's meant to denote you have really earned this. You are really an elite member. So the application fee is $25. And that's really just to cover the cost of reviewing it and possibly printing a certificate. It's probably um, not even covering the cost of those veterans to look at it. Oh, yeah. You know, so, you know I mean, like... Could yeah, they're, yeah the, the, board, the board members are just kind of doing this uh, to help, uh, to help like, push this program through to help benefit the industry. They're not being paid to do it. That pretty much just covers the cost of like a certificate and printing and stuff. So, awesome. um, so yeah, we have a, if you go on our website, you could see the, the a sample of the certificate we have. I actually designed myself. Um, so when, if you, if you achieve any of these ranks, you'll receive a printed, a nice printed certificate that denotes your rank, but that's the actual printed certificate itself is really just something nice to hang on the wall. The real benefits of it come from having the, uh, the recognition of IADA, the legacy of IADA behind you. Because even if, 
any given person, especially younger people in the industry, may not have heard of IADA. The name IADA carries a lot of weight behind it. I mean, like I like I mentioned, it, it's almost a century old. You'd be hard pressed. If you guys if, in the industry know IADA, yeah, exactly. Like the people who are know. people who are executives, people who are senior claims managers, people who uh, own body shops, like any of those people who hear IADA certified master appraiser, they're going to take. Uh, recognition. Um, there's also, there's, there's another element to it that's not just, hey, you have this qualification so you can tell people, hey, I'm an IADA certified appraiser. Um, part, of, part of what we're trying to do here is, like I was saying, there's this whole other, there's this whole younger generation of appraisers who don't have, they, they're not like linked in with an organization like IADA. So like, you know, 30, 40 years ago, if you were up and coming as an appraiser, that was the standard. You would want to be an IADA, uh, an IADA member appraiser. And part of the benefits of that are to have this network behind you, this organization behind you. So as an IADA certified appraiser, you're going to have the benefits of IADA behind you. That's the network, having, having this network of industry veterans who have all of these connections, you're gonna be able to network, you're gonna be able to get support from these guys. You'll have the guidance. Um, we're considering putting putting out like a formal mentorship program to help people kind of make their way up in the industry. Part of what we're trying to do with this, reaching out to the wider community is as, as sort of a hand up. Because we've got all these guys who have all these connections, all these resources, all these clients. And, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say that. They probably don't want to share their clients, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I was going to but, say, uh, no, no, no. They're not going to, no. But yeah, I get but, what you're saying. But no, they like all these. Help others. Yeah, all these, they have, there's all these resources, all these social connections. And I, I always tell people, you cannot overrate the value of networking. Nope. It is, it is, it, I mean, they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. And it's kind of both, but knowing the right people is so valuable and will take you so far. Now it's. Is this necessarily going to get you additional clients? Maybe not. You're not necessarily going to see like, oh, I got the certification and then next week I doubled the amount of money I was making. That's not really what's going to happen. But long term, over 5, 10, 15, 20 years, the amount, the connections this being involved in this program will allow you to make will be absolutely invaluable. Um, you'll, you'll, you will be able to make, we're, we're going to have, uh, hopefully, once you know the whole lockdown's over, we're going to start having actual physical events where people will be able to network. We'll have like open meetings. We we generally IADA has its own organizational meetings, but we're going to have some open events at some point where people can come. Anyone involved in the program or anyone just anyone in the industry is going to be able to come and network with these people who are so well connected that it'll just be an invaluable networking opportunity. You'll be able to make lifelong relationships and partnerships and stand shoulder to shoulder as colleagues with some of the most elite members of our profession. Love it. So Pete, I'm going to ask a little bit about you real quick as we get ready to wrap up. Sure. Uh, how many years you've been in the industry? Just rapid fire. I've been an appraiser for 10 years. All right. So you've been in the appraiser for 10 years. I've been doing it right around that same length of time. We're kind of of the same blood right now of like where is this industry going how can we help it further along mm -hmm. so as that age group that, that that you and i are a part of you're saying man i think this is a good thing to aspire to right like the you, you're not you haven't been in the industry 30 years and you're saying mm -hmm. you should be like me you're saying hey we got to step up our game we collectively me you the other guy like we as an industry it, and you think this is worth it right you're saying, yeah. let's hang our hat on something. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I, I'm a little biased in that respect because <laughs> I'm, I'm clearly very involved in the program. I mean, all, all the, if you go and look on our website, all the documents you see, the certificates and everything, I personally wrote all those. I didn't, uh, I didn't, the only thing, I didn't actually set these specific requirements and standards. That was all set by the review board, who's more qualified to do so, but as the media manager, I created all of that. I put it all up on the website. I'm reaching out to you to get on here to talk about it. So when I talk about having uh, uh, wanting to offer benefits and offer a hand up to other people in the industry and connect people with resources that'll 
benefit their career hugely. Those are all things that I personally am very invested in doing. I've kind of made it my personal mission to reach out to the younger, newer member, excuse me, members of the industry, people who aren't connected to IADA. And not just for the benefit of IADA, but I want to help these people just to help our community. So I can vouch for that because since Pete and I have been talking, all of a sudden, once, twice a week, he's like, hey, dude, I found this really cool resource that your community and people might be able to benefit from. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I never would have created this, you know, white sheet, <laughs> white sheet or white paper on uh, cameras or like, oh, my gosh, this yeah. is a great resource about XYZ. So I really appreciate what you're doing. I'm so glad there's other younger people out there who are like, let's, let's help better this industry. Let's help each other out. And I appreciate what IEDA is doing and trying to reach out and broaden their base and to help elevate all of us. So, and I thank you so much for your time today, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if anyone, anyone watching, if you want to check out the IADA or the certification program, you can find all of that on IADA.org. There's a page up just for the certification program. You'll also be able to see on there, I've, I've just started putting out a series of articles on behalf of IADA that are kind of touching on uh, the topics of the tech trends in our industry. So what you were talking there about the, uh, the white paper on camera. So I basically put out a appraiser, a guide to digital cameras for appraisers. They'll tell you, you know, is it what do you, should you be using a smartphone? Should you have a separate camera? What camera should you buy and all that? So I'm basically just trying to put out as many resources as I can for our community. Love it. Love it. Really appreciate it. So if you guys are interested in the IADA as a community and joining in uh, with their full membership, or you're just interested in their certification, head over to IADA.org. And Pete, thanks so much once again for your time and what you're doing. It's a pleasure to be associated with you, man. No problem. See you guys. Thanks for watching.